Okay, a little risque departure, so to speak, here. Um, I don't know, but anyway, people are always asking me about loops and stag films and smokers and stuff, so here's a, a thumbnail sketch, whatever, if you notice this one here has something. This, this is your old school one where they would stencil something on the side here and then put a picture in of some disgusting perverted stuff, which, oh my God, would you want to see this guy naked? We can't, you know, we can't have that one. No, so that's the original box type thing. Um, of course, the Rolls Royce of uh, the Stag films were the Swedish erotica films, which I'm showing you the catalog here, which basically was the box covers. But being that you're the Rolls Royce, you tend to get ripped off. And here is a bogus Swedish erotica bootleg. Um, and they, you know, of course I had to cover this up, but yeah, this is, these were put in this box and were sent out like this. And here's another one, which you can tell is pretty much, you know, a picture was shot of the box. It was put in this plastic case, which a lot of films came in plastic cases. And, uh, you know, they were bootleggers. I mean, you know, the, the funny thing is with, um, You'd know you got a batch of bootleg stag films when the color was way off. Like, I got stuff that had heavy-duty greens in it and heavy-duty reds, and you'd bring them back because they were rip-offs. So, that's, like I said, Swedish Erotica was the Rolls-Royce. Then there was other ones. We have Oz Films from California, which pretty much specialized in... Uh, oh, we're getting a glare here, whatever. Why are we getting a glare? I'll put it down like that. A little bit of a fucking glare. But anyway, Oz Films were... Um, uh, heavy duty stuff with a lot of S and M and B and D and some strange stuff, uh, some import stuff actually. Okay, and then we had Lassie Brown from uh, Italy, who did a lot of period stuff here, different weird things, and uh, some of his stuff was pretty extreme too. Let me bring a whole pile over here. What the hell? I gotta work this out. <laughs> We're working in the parameters of a small space trying to do this shit. I don't know why I can't get it over here, but anyway. Um, here we go. Get a bad glare here for some reason. I don't know what the hell. Bear with me a second. Now we don't have that fucking... Oh, we still got a glare. Get a play around with this shit. No, we don't have a glare. We got enough light here. Sorry, playing around here. But anyway, hey, John Holmes has his own line, John's Girls, which had about maybe uh, a dozen or so releases, maybe more. Here's a better shot of the Oz films, 8mm color films from California. And here's another, like, nondescript box quality uh, film products, and they would basically stencil on the side there, like, this is the Paradise number 36. Here's a bootleg. What they would do is pretty much take a color film, copy it in black and white, slap this little photo on a box, and bang. There you go. Another bootleg. And here's one with, um, how can you, how can you top uh, a company called the Bionic Cock? Six Far Out Six Adventures. Sword Throat, Jam Session, Terry's Aria, Full Mouth, Queen of Paradise, and The Candyman. Collect a complete series. And, of course, it would be like The Candyman on the side here. Then you had Climax Originals. Look at the price on this. Fifty bucks. Fifty dollars. Usually they would stick a photo here. So that's Climax. Now we got the stuff we sort of had to cover up a bit with um, from Stockholm. Intimate love films. Um, if Stockholm was probably close to Manhattan, yeah, you'd be right. And of course we have a uh, little B and D favorites here. This was a you know high production. Um, my favorite pains. Uh, $60. And we also, you know, we we had transgendered stuff back then too, um, which probably is politically incorrect, but this was the dawn of this whole stuff and it became a cottage industry, the she male encounters thing. Um, you know, it started off, I think, I'm trying to remember because I sold the damn VHS tapes. There might have been six or seven tapes, then all of a sudden with DVDs, this exploded. And honestly, I made a lot of money on this stuff back in, you know, going back in the uh, the early eBay days before you got screwed with the shit. So here's another um, bootleg box for a Swedish erotica. Then we have um, 
Bizarre bondage films. These were import. Th these were all like, you know, some of this stuff was professionally shot. You know, toward the end, it was all professionally shot. But, you know, in the beginning, some stuff was ha half ass shot in motel rooms and shit like that. But these were professionally shot. And, you know, they got uh, better, better looking boxes like uh, Playboy Productions and uh, Penetration Films. Affair films. Um, and the, the bogus imported ones, which makes you think you're getting something special. And this one was uh, Vanessa Del Rio with Little Big Man, who the Little Big Man was Ralphie De Jesus from Bloodsucking Freaks. Go figure. Then we had love films. Of course, I had to cover that one up. Uh, sex fantasies was another one. Cream films. Get these out of the way. And we got Playhouse with John Holmes in somebody. And then we had these bigger ones. This was an import one. This this probably I God only knows what this thing sold for. 250 feet regular regular eight. I don't think there's anything explicit in here, but you can sort of see how big the damn box was and how big the reel was. This was probably probably somebody would have retailed this for like a hundred bucks back then. But wait, we have more. We're not done. We got a ton of stuff here. Of course I had to break some of it down. But you had certain companies that, you know, after a while, you got catalogs and stuff. I mean, who could argue with Satan? You know, scorching sex action that blisters your screen. That was Satan films. There was also, you know, there was, this is Satan 2. There was a volume 1. Then you had Garter Girls. And these all came in plastic boxes and sort of alluded that they were imports. Party Films International. Moon Films International. Now, this this was one of the ones that had some really strange, weird shit in their catalog, stuff that you could never get away with today, including a little bestiality, torture, bondage, whatever. It, it just a, a really strange company, and they had a lot of stuff out there. And there was Libra Films, another one that had some pretty weird little things in their catalog that uh, probably you couldn't get away with today either. Then you had direct from Copenhagen, and this was the real deal, Color Climax Films, started in 1974. Um, these were really nasty import German films, which basically featured a lot of stuff that we can't really say here. And we had these bondage films here. Roxbury Press was one that basically... Um, this was shot professionally. There was Roxbury Press. There was a few other ones um, that basically they shot softcore bondage and S&M films. Uh, perennial favorites in these were Serena and Renee, Renee Bond, but uh, they weren't really hardcore. Some of them were really strange, and I have put out a few of them on my uh, uh, Extreme Sleeve Showcase collections. Then you got, these were the headers from the boxes. You got San Francisco Original 200. You got Selecta. You had Sex American Style. You had Erotica Unlimited. And here, here's the thing. The films that I'm showing you, the boxes, these all wound up being put out on my, you know, my DVD collections, which probably number in over three dozen right now. Now, here's something else, and I had some of this in another thing. These were actually the cards that were outside of the peep show boots to let you know what was going on with them. Um, back off a little bit here. See little film things in here, but, you know, they put the thing from the box there, and, you, you know, you get that. You know, there's Jamie Gillis. Something's going on with him. Here's one that really blew everybody's mind, Barbara Streisand. Whether it was her, I really don't know. I had that damn loop. Somebody ripped it off. It was in sepia tone. This, I weirdly enough, uh, everybody talks about that really creepy uh, peep show emporium. 
on at, at uh, on the island between the Seventh and Eighth Avenue, which is uh, now a police substation or was a police substation, Crossroad Books, and I distinctly remember this being in there along with a bunch of other weird shit, including a snuff film. And I've talked about that before. So again, Selecta. Sometimes you'd have you know double features on these peep show boots. Um, Danish erotica, of course, you can see Seeker's head peeking up out of there. And uh, Orion, this is one of those weird ass things. You, you know, you can see it, the off printing on it. It's like one of those things. It was a boot. You know, they put they put this in a white box. And um, last but not least, Tiger. Um, like I said, most of, you know most of these empties you see I put out on my. Um, you know, 8mm Madness collections and things like that, so they're available through there. Unfortunately, films, film stock does not hold up. Um, the colors sort of fade to a reddish tint. Then they are um, basically fade away to nothing. And some of them get which what is known as vinegar syndrome, which basically the film has a chemical reaction and is breaking down and gives off a vinegar smell which, weirdly enough, can be transferred to other films. It's almost like a virus. It's like, a, you know, a chemical breakdown. Uh, there's ways to treat it, but it becomes expensive. And basically, if you have a film that's starting to go like that, you got to treat it right away or you'll infect your whole collection. So, here's a little trip back in slime. And uh, I hate to end this on a sad note, but I just found out that Lisa Loring, Wednesday from the Adams Family, passed away um, Today, I believe today is like uh, January 29th, I believe, and uh, she she passed away at age 64, so uh, rest in peace, Lisa. Um, weirdly enough, from the two monster sitcoms back in the day, The Addams Family and The Monsters, the oldest cast member of The Addams Family, John Aston, is still with us, and the youngest cast member of The Monsters, Butch Patrick, is still with us, so it's kind of strange, but... Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing. Above all, stay safe, and we'll have more for you down the road.